Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Crypto Philanthropy, where we highlight the top giving news stories and the power of crypto for good. I'm your host, Nick Mikulewski, Senior Sales Manager here at The Giving Block. And uh, flying solo today, Pietro is out at a big conference, Money 2020 in Las Vegas. Uh, if you hadn't seen uh, our big announcement earlier in the week, Shift4 just announced a massive pay with crypto capability. So the team is out there showcasing that to the world. It's absolutely huge. You probably um, may have seen a post about it on the Giving Block, but if you are curious, check out our socials. Uh, it's an absolutely phenomenal next phase in uh, digital payment evolution. So check that out. Um, on today's episode, we've got a special guest and wanted to run a little bit of an abridged agenda. So before we get to uh, our special guest, wanted to just mention uh, a couple of really key data points as we're heading into giving season. Now, uh, you may have seen the news that Bitcoin specifically is just about at all time highs. Um, it it uh, touched 73,000 um, yesterday or the day before, hovering around 71, 72,000 today. It's pretty much at its cycle high. So as we're heading into giving season, 99% uh, of all Bitcoin holders are in profit. So they are in profit. There is a tax incentive to donate as we go into this, these next few months. Uh, so if you are nonprofit funders out there, start tapping some folks on the shoulder, see if they've got some crypto, see if they have some Bitcoin. They are so tax advantaged to give right now. And along with that, we're starting to see how that's ramping up in the data. So just over the last seven days, from the start of our Crypto for Good campaign, which is the big theme of this year as we're in year-end giving season, we've seen already nearly 800,000 in just crypto donations alone. So it is a phenomenal setup for crypto right now. Phenomenal that it's coming um, right during giving season. And again, we want to highlight all of these uh, great stories uh, that showcase crypto for good. So over the next coming episodes, we're likely, you know, going to be continuing to talk more about that. So with that aside, just remember, crypto at all-time highs, uh, a lot going on in the market, a lot of donor activity right now. And with that, want to switch over to our special guest. So uh, please uh, welcome to the show, Amanda Keen. Amanda works on our client success team. This is where all the real magic happens. So Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nick. Um, it's really great to be here. I haven't been on the podcast yet, so really excited. Um, just to introduce myself, I've been um, in the fundraising sector as a generalist fundraiser for about 15 years now, which to me means basically I've done a little bit of everything from building corporate partnerships, writing grants, running marketing campaigns, donor events, even golf events, which I have feelings about. Um, but I've been privileged to work for incredible organizations like Perscolis, Black Girls Code, Wall Street Bound, and, and more, mostly focused on education, equity, and opportunity. Um, and what makes my experience unique here at The Giving Block is I was a client before I moved over to staff. So I can speak from both the client perspective and now the staff member perspective. Um, so throughout my career, I've always been drawn to innovative ways of funding nonprofit missions and creating that impact. So when the opportunity came up to dive into crypto philanthropy with the giving block, it felt really like a natural extension of my work. Um, I know that for a lot of nonprofits, including myself at the time, crypto felt intimidating or even unnecessary at first, but I've seen how transformative it is. Um, and just like with emerging tech, the key is having the right guidance, strategy, and resources to make it work for you. So in my role here now, I get to work directly with nonprofits to make sure they're fully supported on this journey from understanding the basics to building powerful crypto fundraising strategy that bring in new donors and drive real results. Um, my goal is to really help nonprofits see crypto as not as just a new donation option, but as a way to tap into that engaged, impact-driven community that's eager to support causes that align with their values. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I love the fact that you 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 know you were from the nonprofit space. You were uh, you know a fundraiser. So I have to imagine that when our clients you know come over to our client success team, and, and we have other folks on our client success team also from the nonprofit space, also former fundraisers uh, with direct experience. Um, and your experience of even going down the sort of the crypto, um, you know, rabbit hole or, or even like just getting that set up for the first time has to give a lot of our clients, um, you know, some great confidence in that, like, okay, I'm talking to someone who's like been in my shoes, who knows kind of what I'm going through or what uh, some of the you know, questions I might have, what some of the hurdles that, um, that I think are in front of me. Um, it has to be a real comfort knowing that you can probably answer a lot of questions, some considerations they may not even have considered to this point, to, up to that point, but it must be a really nice feeling knowing that they have an expert to kind of guide them along this journey, right? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, definitely. You know, what really kind of drove me to the giving block was their commitment to going above and beyond and guiding nonprofits through their crypto philanthropy journey, um, you know, really far beyond that initial step. Um, and, you know, when I was a dev director and strapped for time, I used the giving box knowledge based. I used the resources that was provided to me to build out my end of year campaigns, to build out my social posts and more. Um, so I know, you know, we understand that for a lot of nonprofits, crypto really can feel like that unfamiliar territory. And that's why I'm here. And that's why we're here to make sure they're fully supported every step of the way. So. To me, when I think about the Giving Block and our kind of strategic support team, um, we're a dedicated partner rather than just a surface. So when nonprofits come on board with the Giving Block, and I know you know this, Nick, we're set at not just setting them up with a crypto donation tech stack um, and walking away. Um, we're helping them develop a real strategy for leveraging crypto, supporting them in understanding this complex ecosystem, and providing the resources they need to engage and educate their own networks. Um, we know that crypto can be transformative as a tool for mission-driven organizations, and my job is to make that transformation as smooth and impactful as possible. Yeah, and <clears throat> I guess you know when you're sitting down with a, you know, a nonprofit that's that's going through this, and believe me, I know there's a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different kinds of orgs. Everybody can be approaching this from a lot of different ways. But um, are there certain things that you typically um, you know start working uh, with a nonprofit? on what or even beyond that what are some things that you know people have um seen some interest in as they kind of put this out to their donor base are there certain things that they tend to come across are there certain opportunities that start to present themselves like what does it look like when you know an organization starts working with the team and 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 what are some common themes that you guys typically go through so for starters we provide personalized onboarding and training to make teams feel confident about crypto from day one we walk them through every detail from setting up the crypto donation forms to understanding tax and regulatory considerations so they have that solid foundation from the start. And then once they're set up, we don't just hand them the keys and leave them to figure it out on their own. Um, we offer that ongoing strategic support to help nonprofit develop targeted crypto campaigns and speak to this unique donor audience. And then our team really helps nonprofits create those campaigns that aren't just crypto friendly. I, I like to call them crypto optimized. Um, and for organizations that want to take it a step further, we offer tailored growth plans, which include everything from crypto focused marketing support to understand how to connect with crypto influencers and ambassadors. And honestly, crypto donors often respond well to social proof and influence within their community. So this is a game changer for nonprofits looking to amplify their message. And, you know, as crypto is rapidly evolving in this space and many spaces, we're always available to answer questions, provide updates on best practices. We have webinars. We have an entire knowledge base filled with information. And now we have these really extensive support services to help nonprofits navigate any challenges and stay ahead of the curve. Think about those organizations that uh, have yet to kind of work with the team a little bit more closely. Uh, you mentioned that social proof being really important. And again, as we're going into this, you know, crypto for good campaign, um, which is all about spreading the the power of crypto for good and highlighting all of these like great stories, these great moments of impact. Um, what are some ways that the that you work with nonprofits to help them with that social proof and kind of, you know, build up that momentum? Because sometimes we see that when 
one story hits and it, it can really kind of build from there and all of a sudden open up all kinds of really new and interesting opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of my work with nonprofits has been focused on um, creating specific crypto campaigns. Um, and there's two ways to do that. There's one one way to lean into, let's say it's your end of year campaign or your spring campaign and have a crypto component to it. The other way is to create something a little bit more unique niche and something that folks in the crypto donor community can attach themselves to, whether it's naming rights to something, a specific hashtag, an impact statement that resonates with them, um, or even attracting crypto donors through taxes. Um, so, you know, an understanding that there's a lot of tax benefits to donating crypto um, in comparison to selling off their asset and then donating cash. So there's a really, um, for me, when I, when I work with organizations, I suggest a, a couple of pronged approach. So the first is being loud and proud on social media um, and announcing that your nonprofit accepts crypto um, as an innovative tool. So you're bringing your organization to the forefront of philanthropy, the forefront of fundraising and me meeting your, the donors where they are, um, which I think is really important and something that organizations don't always have the capacity to do and the giving block gives them that capacity. Um, the second is educating the donors on the benefits of donating crypto. And then the third is that impact, um, what crypto can do. For a client that's received donations, what it has done, um, what those donations have done um, is really important to announce, um, whether it's on social or to their community. Um, and then what the next iteration of crypto looks for them, the next $150, $100 million worth of crypto can do for their organization to provide insight into what the organization has done and will do. Yeah. And as we talk through some of this stuff, uh, I have to imagine at at some point, there could be some folks out there thinking like, geez, that, that all sounds really good. <laughs> where I am and where that is sounds like it could be a bit of a, you know, big kind of leap there. Like, it sounds like maybe that's, there's a lot of work involved. What can you say around like the, the I don't necessarily want to say like time commitment, because what I try to, to, at least highlight with some of the organizations that I talk to is like, look, a lot of this is the exact same fundraising muscles you're already used to using, right? We're not kind of approaching something that is entirely foreign to what many fundraisers are used to. Certainly the don't the demographic and the type of asset we're talking about might be a little bit of like new material, but you know, it's a, it, it's a lot of the same things. We're just talking about a different fashion. So talk to our audience. I, I think a little bit around like the, time investment, time commitment, sort of a la for lack of a better term, because um, be r really good to know, you know, how much of someone's bandwidth, resources, whatever you want to call it, might need to be devoted to this, large or small. Yeah, definitely. I think it it depends on what you want to make of it. Um, again, it sounds much scarier than it is. Um, and to be honest, coming from a fundraising background to begin with, Crypto philanthropy is way more fun than traditional philanthropy. The engagement strategies are more casual, more direct, um, and definitely can be transactional in comparison to, you know, a multi-year grant where you have to write reports, um, you know, calculate numbers, give out your budget. A lot of these crypto donors are giving in an unrestricted way, which is always preferred, um, and just want to know general impact. Um, so for, for starters, educating yourself, using our knowledge base, using the resources that we have, that'll take a couple hours just for setup to understand the crypto space and to understand how your organization interacts with that. Second would be actually starting um, for the creation of a plan. And that's where our support services can come in. We have templates. Um, we have webinars that you can take a look at and actually learn how to and best practices. Again, we're not just leaving you to your own. If you ask, hey, how do I optimize my website for this? How do I, you know, where do I put my donation form? Um, or even, can you talk to me about, you know, a capital campaign and, and integrating a capital campaign in, with crypto? We can do that with you. Um, you know, for me, when I was a dev director, I probably took about two hours a week um, just to dive into crypto, um, not only to educate myself, but also to do the posts on social, to do, um, you know, email outreach, segment donors, make sure that I wasn't flooding our donor base with, you know, just crypto uh, solicitation, but really targeting the donors that, you know, would be interested. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's great. 
you know, to kind of put that in context, and I think you're, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, when you were going through that exercise, that was a little bit more of like self-directed, maybe without yeah. all of the great kind of like the knowledge base is there too. So that for anybody who's a current client or anybody who's, um, you know, thinking about getting into this, um, you know, this space with us, um, the knowledge base is a great kind of, um, you know, sort of map that you can kind of follow to sort of, you know, get yourself a little bit navigated around the space. Plus you've got the ability to, to work with folks like, uh, uh, you and, and the rest of the team on kind of bring that, um, you know, to, to life, so to speak. So, um, I guess, you know, is there any kind of, um, you know, advice you would give to organizations right now? We're here at year end, um, thinking about, you know, some of the things I mentioned at the top of the show with crypto being at all time highs and the campaign and um, the the amount of volume that we're seeing coming in. You know, what are some easy, practical things that people can do that's not like, hey, you have to craft like this entire, you know, big strategy at year end. What are some easy things that people can do to, see, you know, work this into kind of who they are as a nonprofit and sort of the year end appeals? Yeah, definitely. I think um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. Um, Take a look at social posts. Take a look at X um, and see what other organizations are doing successfully. I know the Giving Block has um, an appeal contest every week um, where we're able to donate $1,000 to nonprofits who have the best appeal, whether it's video, social post, email, direct mail. Take a look at those um, and model your campaign after that. Um, again, there's, you know, the, the resources are out there. Um, and then if you have questions, just reach out. If you're ideating a campaign, if you're, you know, have a question about a social post, that's where these strategic support services come in. It's for guidance, strategies, um, as well as just general advice. So we're really here to help nonprofits unlock that full potential of crypto as a tool for impact. So use us. Take a look at best practices um, and then don't reinvent the wheel. Awesome. I love that. Well, that'll pretty much uh, sort of wrap things up for today's episode, but there's a ton of great content that's available on the Giving Blocks website, our blog, our newsletter, obviously content here. But for anybody who is interested in getting in touch and going deeper with our client success team, we'll put some uh, helpful links for, for folks to check out. Um, but, uh, on behalf of Amanda and the rest of the client success team, they're awesome. Please, please. If you haven't already engaged with them, they are the true rock stars that make, uh, all these great things happen. Um, but on behalf of, uh, everyone here at the giving block, thanks so much for, uh, listening and we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.